Hey guys, NJ here. So, a bit of an interesting video this one. Um, as you may have noticed in one of my previous videos, I have a Steam Deck. I love it to pieces. It's a fantastic piece of technology uh, by a great company, Valve. Um, and because I've been traveling so much, this has been an absolute godsend because it's basically a fully fledged PC. However, one of the things that I do an awful, awful lot, have done for the last decade or so is, uh, yeah, probably longer than that, is flight simming, especially DCS. I've been doing this one a very long time and my main rig, my main PC setup, very powerful setup for VR, because that's how I normally fly, DC, uh, fly in DCS with a full VR rig. HOTAS, uh, stick and throttle, rudder pedals, m absolutely millions of buttons and switches because that's what DCS is. It's not really um, anything like, say, War Thunder, which is kind of a pick up and play and just go and press A button to shoot. And so it's it's not that. This is a, um, you know, some of the aircraft you get on here are pretty much study level. Um, and if and it has a fantastic flight model. And if you know about DCS, you'll know what I'm talking about. However, most of the community, I'm sure, um, and I was certainly a person that would be in that you know, boat on speculation would say the Steam Deck's a completely unsuitable unit or device to, to, to run DCS for those aforementioned things. However, um, as I've been traveling for the last four months and not being able to do any DCS, I thought, look, I'm going to install this and just see what I can do. I've got the time to do it. Can I get this to work in some capacity? And I think that's the main thing here, the in some capacity thing Um it does carry some subjectivity to all of this. So for me, just being able to get into this and fly around and not feel like I'm, you know, crippled because of a lack of controls. Um, I think that's probably the most that's that's all I was after. What I think I got w was actually um, something far better than that. I think I ended up with a, with a really comfortable control scheme, and that doesn't involve me plugging in a Bluetooth mouse or a, uh, plugging in a Bluetooth mouse. Didn't think about that before I said it. Um, <laughs> connecting a Bluetooth Bluetooth mouse or a Bluetooth keyboard. This is purely using the device itself. Now, one of the nice things about the Steam Deck, I know, because the contrast of the screen, you can't see too much here, but. Um, is that you have a set of joysticks, you have two sets of track pads, you have lots of buttons, D-pad, you have four grip buttons on the back. There's actually a lot here you can do, and it is infinitely configurable. Um, for instance, getting the D, the uh, track pad here, for instance, the, uh, one of these could operate as a mouse, uh, which it does in this case. You see I've configured it so the right track pad is a mouse, very important in DCS. The left track pad I've actually got as uh, I've got it to operate essentially as a d-pad so when i press in on it it's a right mouse click but when i hit the corners uh sorry the the flat edges top bottom left and right it acts like a d-pad but i assign keyboard shortcuts to it so i've got different types of keyboard shortcuts here it's the configurability of this thing that made this possible and one of the re one of the many reasons why i absolutely love the steam deck anyway why not let's go in and have a little look i made a quick mission here just to show you uh this one will do this will give you an idea of the kind of thing uh, as a starting point if you like just to, to give you an idea of where you could go with this so for me just being able to jump in an aircraft do a little bit of you know um flying maybe i just want to do some ifr flying I want to practice an ILS approach in bad weather with low visibility and I want to navigate about that kind of stuff. I really enjoy uh, if you're a dogfighter, you'd probably set all this up very differently. But I'm just going to show you how I've done this. So on the back buttons, uh, to start with these two grip, there's two grips on the back that I operate with my um, middle fingers here. I've I've got that set to slow zoom in and out. And then here, the push button on the right joystick, if I click on that. I can now look around the cockpit. And as you can see, this looks absolutely fantastic. What I will do is in a second video, if this is something you're interested in, I will go into detail about my graphic settings, how I have my deck configured on that side, and also how to get DCS World running, because you can't just run it straight out of the box. And this is actually DCS Open Beta. It's not the Steam Edition. Um, but that's all for another video. Otherwise, this video will get very long indeed. Um, so here I am in an MB339 pan. Um, and if you... 
look here when I was talking about the operation of this um, trackpad using it as a d-pad I've got f1 on here to look in uh, to for cockpit view f2 here will take me outside and again the zoom buttons still work and I can pan around um, with the trackpad and this is actually uh, in trackball mode so there's some inertia to it so if I flick it does actually keep going a bit and you've got some haptics with that too you don't have to have it like that but that's quite nice if you want to just flick and get around the view quickly um, so this side of the trackpad here f1 view again I'm inside the cockpit um, let's just quickly start this up just to show you this isn't me just all talking so battery and the two gens Let's go over to the left side. We will turn on engine master, JPT limiter, and get a cranked. So we'll probably get some volume in here now that the, uh... there we go. I'm just gonna turn on while I'm waiting for that. Um, so that's at about 25%, you can see there. So we'll introduce the throttle out of idle cutoff. That should get us coming to life which we are, magical, uh, let's close the canopy which I have as a push button on the left joystick um, and then let's go down here and we can turn on the RNAV um, once that self test is quickly done we can set that calibrating or aligning I should say last stored accept, that should be a fairly fast align uh, let's zoom out a little bit and do some left so uh, right side panel stuff. Let's turn on the pitot and engine anti-ice. Let's turn on some lights. Should do some of those before starting up, but you know, in the essence of getting this done fast, I'll turn on the little bit of cockpit lighting, demist, turn the canopy to hot, or the air conditioning to hot. We also have the ejection seat pin, the control column needs to come loose. And then we've got oxygen, let's turn on the radios, transmit receive and set it to both. Done the anti-skid, what else do I need to do? I think we're pretty much, there's a very fast aircraft to get up and going. Parking brake would be a good one, we'll do that last but we'll do it anyway. So left click and then push it in and then we also have if you look at us up here we'll set a little bit of nose up trim and then we'll pull in the speed brake and the flaps now I've got the flaps up on the d-pad uh, left and right so set flaps to half I've got B on the left side for speed brake so we'll bring that in I can confirm that just looking outside here that's all perfect and then the other thing I've got which I really like in this particular aircraft um, is that it's got an instructor seat that you can sit in. So what I can do, for instance, as I do in this one, is I have a nice close view of the cockpit there in the front seat, and then I've got the X button to switch me and the Y between the front and the back seat. Um, so I can have a more panned out view from here. Um, and let's very quickly just turn a couple of bits on in here as well. Doing this as fast as I can. Uh, oxygen, radios, oops. Um, that's the other thing about the top of the D-pad, I've got escape so I can actually stop and adjust controls and stuff. Uh, and then at the bottom here, uh, the, the lower part, I've got that set to the map. Um, and then the right stick here, um, I've got that set to uh, zoom in and out. So that works really well for the F10 view or the map view. Um, so that's that covered. Um, and then let's zoom out so we can have a nice kind of wide out view here. And then back to the front, I'm nice and close up. So I've already got three nice operating views here. Um, I've got my external view, in cockpit, back seat for the wide view. And again, I can just very, you know, because it's got that inertia, I can just flick to have a little look over the sides like that. And then one other thing I've set up here, which I think you'll find very useful. The Steam Deck has complete control over the, uh, or use of the, the inbuilt gyros. So what I've done here is, let's say I'm doing an ILS approach. Um, so if I was gonna set up, uh, let's say, let me do this actually. So if we go steer, 
airport and then let's choose Cobaletti there it is so we've chosen Cobaletti let's set the uh, HSI to the RNAV mode so we can see Cobaletti is 125 miles away uh, course of 246 degrees and I know the runway radial there is 070 I think or thereabouts oh, I'll get it close enough for now well, I need to set that to be a little bit finer in control but yeah um, let's say that's done now what I can do so I know where I'm going let's say I'm on uh, I've got low visibility and I'm doing an ILS approach and I don't want to look take my head away from the display or the, the the dials here whilst I'm doing that ILS approach if I then want to peak up what I've done is I've set this gyro to come on capacitively so if I touch this just touching that and now tilt the deck and I can actually just whilst I'm flying as normal but if, if I take my thumb off of that this doesn't do anything if I put my thumb on it, it enables the gyro mode and now I can just peek up away from the dial, see if a runway's there or not. Hopefully there will be if I've done my ILS approach properly um, in, in bad weather. So yeah, that's a really cool feature. And again, I can, I've set the sensitivity up, so not that much of a tilt. I can look around at the back wing whilst I'm taxiing. I can keep an eye on where I'm going. You could probably utilize this pretty nicely for uh, dog fighting as well. Um, but with the zooms on the back, back uh, paddles, and my thumb here, I can now look around with the gyroscope, which I think makes that really fantastic. It's kind of just a little halfway house towards you, what you would do with track IR using your movement in your head. Um, so yeah, let's throttle up a little bit and let's do exactly that. We'll just do a little takeoff. Now I do have this locked to 30 FPS and that was so I could crank the visuals up and the Steam Deck does a wonderful job of making things very smooth. Um, I didn't turn on those while steering. There we go. Forgot about that in this one. Now we're steering. Here we go. Um, yeah, the Steam Deck just does a wonderful job. Thirty F, whatever FPS you're running at, it just it's it just makes everything so smooth. It's a wonderful device. The way they've got this all working in Steam OS, no complaints about running this at thirty FPS. As you can see, everything just runs butter smooth and it's all you need in the flight sim honestly um vr dog fighting you might want a little more sure thing but um for a device like this to be doing all of this so well um is really something um so oh, i've had this bug before i'm hitting the toe brake so i've got two more paddles i've got the toe brakes on a paddle at the back which don't seem to be working and then I've also got on the lower right paddle the relights if you're taking off in bad weather and lots of rain uh, this engine needs the relight button held down or it it will flame well it'll just die flame out um, so yeah let's uh, let's just go for it I don't know why the tow brakes aren't working I think that's a bug it's a fairly new aircraft this one um, but we can just get going and then if I want to go from this view to the back view I can do that and again hold the gyro down if I want let's get rid of the nose wheel steering rudders alive it's about 100 knots gonna pitch up a little bit with the left stick not too much or you'll tail strike this and there's the gear flaps forward it was a little too aggressive but we're good we're up we're airborne not wonderful but yeah there we go and again I can look off to the left I can leave that view there if I want. I've done that with the gyro. Switch back to the front. Let's have a look. Okay, I'm climbing too much. Let's bring. Let's trim that down a little bit. So I'm going to trim. And I'm holding the gyro here just so that I can get it where I want it. So I'm going to trim for 2,000 feet per minute at full thrust. That will get me uh, my airspeed coming up, and then we'll aim for like 200 knots. 2,000 foot per minute climb and then I'm also in the left bank here actually I want to be banking the other way if you look at the uh, if you look at where I want to fly on the HSI you'll see we need to go round to like 126-ish 
I can check back out here where I was earlier. You see how beautiful this game looks. I mean, it's just fantastic. Go and zoom in there. Nice view of the airport we just left. Back to the front. Okay, that's us on course for Cobaletti. And now we can trim for that climb. I'm doing a fairly poor job of this, but we'll get it done. Okay, let's get back. Pointing in the right direction. And you can see just how amazing this game looks. I mean, it really is wonderful. Everything working fantastically. Go to the F10 map. See how we're getting on. Again, zoom in or out. Back to F1, so we've got the rear seat. Looks like we're on the climb again. And we should have some fairly nice looking clouds to get above here. Still on course. Oh, there we go. And it's, it's got the horsepower and headroom still if we want to turn the mirrors on. There you go. Lose a couple of frames throwing those on, but nothing you'd really notice. And so if I just wanted to do my little instrument flight here, which I'm doing a poor job of, just to thrust out the equation, um, you can see I can do so and I can just peek up above the uh, console if I want to, carry on with my flight, switch to this view, and this is where DCS just looks so fantastic. I mean, look at this cloud and the weather, time of day, it really is an amazing simulator but this has given me my DCS fix if I want to go out and do stuff I could configure this more suited to shooty stuff um, if that's what you want to do you can certainly do that um, but you know I haven't used the keyboard I haven't used the mouse I've taken off I'm navigating um, and I don't feel hindered in any way to do any of those things this all just works fantastically and with the gyro you've just got a bit more of that freedom back um, what a great device the Steam Deck is so yeah that's a little overview of how that works and how well it works and how beautifully it runs um, if you would like a video showing more of a deep dive on how I've done all of this and how I've got the Steam Deck configured how I've done the graphics um, all that kind of good stuff and maybe go into exactly this control setup and how to do it let me know because again that's quite a big video there's quite a lot for me to do there so if the interest is there i'll do it anyway i hope you enjoyed that quick look at, um dcs running on the steam deck very well and a great way to control it and have some fun if you need that fix on the go hope you enjoyed that see you soon